my B-29s for the Air Weather Service. That day, we were in the middle of a typhoon. We'd lost an engine, and the ship was in a power dive. We tried one procedure after another to straighten her out. Nothing seemed to work. B-29, used in World War II in Korea as a bomber. In our story, you will see it as a typhoon chaser. Although typhoons occur all over the Pacific, they have been particularly vicious in the Okinawa, Japan, Guam Triangle. This is the story of a typhoon known as Marie. It took place during the early days of the Korean War. In August 1950, an Australian freighter encountered a 50-knot wind and a falling barometer somewhere in the southwest Pacific. Soon afterward, a Mats C-54 reported extreme turbulence in the same area. News of these weather sightings was forwarded to headquarters of the 2134th Squadron of the Air Weather Service on Guam. Quickly, these and other reports began to form a pattern. The weather depression east of Okinawa was taking on the characteristics of a Pacific typhoon. It was named Typhoon Marie. Although he didn't know it then, Typhoon Marie was to provide Captain Art Crowley with a unique and dangerous experience. Hey, Jack. Art Crowley. <laughs> hey, a major too, huh? Oh, I got those with my orders. Gonna ferry her over? Yeah, to Oki. Okay. Okay, huh? Hey, Jack, do me a favor. When you get there, uh, go see General Anderson, will you? Sure. No, I mean it. I used to be his co-pilot. He'll remember me. I've gone through channels until I'm blue in the face. I can't get anywhere. Are you attached here? When are you leaving for Oki? I don't know, Art. They got us sitting out some weather over the drink. Oh, it's tough. Uh, not the way I read it. I got caught in the tail end of a typhoon back at 45. The windshield got smashed in, hail flattened out the nacelles, turbulence nearly flipped me into a wave I swear was 200 feet high. I'll sit this out in the officer's club. <laughs> Hello, Matt. Major Davis, Lieutenant Brent. How do you do, sir? They want us back at base operations. We have to check the weather depression west of here. Right. You guys got something to do with typhoons? Yeah, that's right. What do you do, map them or something? Well, no, sir. We fly right through them. Well, take care of yourself, Jack. Don't forget what I said about General Anderson. I've got to get into combat. Major, he tells that to everybody that passes through here. Well, I don't blame him. See how big she is. Okay, I'll take you around. Counterclockwise. What altitude do you suggest? Don't go under 500 feet. The turbulence is liable to flip you right into one of those waves. Okay, 500 it is. Suddenly, 
Falling off at 500. Pilot to weather observer. Everything okay? Roger. Please continue on course until I give you further instruction. According to my calculation, the wind is about 80 knots. I've got a feeling about this one. You haven't seen anything yet. Okay, I've got her size. She's 20 degrees north, 140 degrees east. We're now in the southeast quadrant of the storm. Take her up to 10,000 feet to head for the center. at 10,000. We're going into her. Out of the navigator. Our course will be at right angles to wind direction. Penetration will be made in the usual manner with the circular wind pattern throwing us into the storm center. Extreme can it get, Captain? I've been through eight of these, Matt. You never know. How long do you estimate to reach center? It's hard to tell. Every time you put the nose into the wind, you practically stand still. I figure about a half an hour. Oil pressure's going down to number four. She's coming back now. Pilot engineer, check the oil pressure on number four. Observer to pilot, we should be getting close. I'm getting a reading of 105 knots wind velocity. Approaching center. We're preparing drop zone now. Drop zone. Pilot radio man. Are you reading drop zone? Yes, sir. Let's get out of here. Feather number four. 
That's just where this typhoon is headed. It's really kicking up out there. I, uh, Better alert all B-29 crews. They're to prepare for evacuation from the base. Evacuation, sir? I've been through these Oki typhoons before. If we tie down, the wind will cause enough structural damage to keep those planes on the ground for days. If we fly them out, they'll be ready for action day after tomorrow. Uh, sir, this just came through from headquarters in Tokyo. They expect a major North Korean offensive tomorrow. They're asking for a maximum effort from our wing. It's critical. By 1700 tomorrow? If we fly them out, they'll never make it. If we sit here, we'll have a field full of junk. Rough. Willie Baker 272 to Okinawa Tower. You read me. Tower to Willie Baker 272. Read you Foursquare. Request landing instructions. Tower to Willie Baker 272. We are preparing to evacuate this airfield. Can you proceed to an alternate destination? Negative. We've lost an engine. We're approaching in a state of emergency. Roger, Willie Baker 272. You're clear to land runway 03. Altimeter is 28.75. Surface winds are down the runway, gusting to 35 knots. Use caution. Roger. Evacuate. That'll go great in Korea. Well, what else can they do? You are cleared for a right turn at the next intersection. Expedite. Hey, what gives? We're standing still, but look at our airspeed. We're indicating 60 knots. It's the wind. Must be blowing 60. I'll front up to 70. about maintenance. We've got to get this engine fixed so we can evacuate. Evacuate nothing. These bombs are staying right where they are. Yeah, but they'll be ripped apart. Maybe she's already blowing out there. Let her blow. I've got an idea. If General Anderson will see me, these planes will be ready for action tomorrow. It's so hard I had trouble getting across the field to the administration building. It was even more trouble getting past the General's six deputies. If I didn't know him, I might not have made it. Thank you, sir. How are you, Art? Not so good, especially that I hear that you're evacuating the base. Well, we've got no choice. 
You know why. You just flew through it. Yeah, it's a rough one, sir. My prediction would be worse than 47. There were 200 dead by the time that was over. You don't have to leave, sir. You can leave the ships on the ground. Tied down, they'd get wrecked. Not tied down, sir. Sir, I was just out on the runway, indicating 60 knots. A gust of 60 knots hit us, and we just stood still. Now, I'm not so sure I follow you. If we can keep our ships headed into the wind, and if at the same time, when the wind hits takeoff speed, 80 knots, the engines are revved up, we can fly right through that storm, sitting on the ground. Unlock wheels and rudders? Exactly, sir. When the wind velocity increases, you increase the engine speed. When it drops, you decrease. Tomorrow, when the storm is over, you refuel and you're ready to fly to Korea. I don't know. It'll work, sir. I'm sure of it. I'm not, but I'll try it. Aren't you always wanted to be a bomber pilot? Yes, sir. Okay, Art, this is your show. Thank you, sir. The island was battened down. Light planes were taken apart and stored. Cargo planes were evacuated. Only the B-29 stayed out on the ramp, waiting. Marie was closing fast. Within the hour, the pilots arrived for their briefing. I should have had some rest, but I'd been too worried about what I was going to tell those bomber boys. There will be times when you think your aircraft is going to be blown apart. Your rudders and wheels will be unlocked. You'll do a lot of bouncing. Are there any questions? Captain, how do we get out if we lose control? You don't. Now, this is Art Ross. He'll be acting as weather officer. Art? According to our reports at present, the storm proper should hit within 30 minutes. It'll last the night at least. You may expect wind velocities of up to 150 knots. That's a lot of wind, but you can handle it. You'll note on this radar photo a perfectly formed eye. This indicates a mature storm and a particularly violent one. just before. Wind is now at 44 degrees, velocity 62 knots. We haven't had much time to talk. What was wrong with four? Magneto. They changed it. Did you get any sleep? Yeah, a couple of minutes. Yeah, you look pretty beat, Captain. I'm okay. Oh, our lady friend. Clear channel to every aircraft in the wing. Yes, sir. Leader to wing. From this point, I'll break in on weather data whenever necessary. Wind direction 50 degrees, 64 knots. Maintain your headings at 50 degrees. Leader to wing. Let's crank them up. Engineer. Start one.
reports of wind velocity. Wind velocity 110 knots, direction 65 degrees. Leader to wing, make your adjustments. So far, so good, sir. taking a terrific physical pound. Do so I take it for a while, Captain? It's okay. The relief is standing by, sir. What good is it? You can't send them out into that. Area of extreme turbulence approaching. Wind velocity 125 knots. Take headings of 70 degrees. Gust velocities will now vary with your position in the area. You'll have to handle them by feel. And they have to be a left. Wind velocity, 145 knots. Wind velocity, 150. Chasers of Guam have a tradition. When a man has flown through the eye of a typhoon ten times, he becomes a knight of the old shoe. Four hours after the end of the storm, every B-29 bomber that was on the field was ready for takeoff, and Captain Crowley had earned the old shoe. Still want to fly bombers? Well, I sort of flew 60 of them last night, didn't I? 